said, today, just to start off with, quick little recap of the stuff that we've done the last couple of days. All right, so think of the first couple problems that we did in the review today, all right? We used elimination to solve systems that were what, Logan? What? The first, the stuff we did Monday, all right? We had systems and we used elimination. How are those problems set up? Do we have to, do we have to use any multiplication or anything like that? No, right? Brian? Right? So what, what could we say about those types of problems? They were already what? They were already set up for us, right? All right? They were already set up for us. What does that mean? Who can tell me what that means? They were already set up for us. What are we looking for again? What are we looking for again when we're doing elimination? What kind of, what kind of values are we looking for? Three things. Two things that are the same, one thing that's different. Justin. Same, no, different sign, same number, same letter. Good. Different sign, same number, same letter, right? All right? Same number, same letter, opposite sign or different sign, like Justin said. That's fine. All right? Those are the most basic. All right? There's no, there's no multiplication involved. None of that. All right? But what might... For those type of problems, what might you have to do? What might you need to do in those type of problems? And okay, but how are, uh, how, are those, how are those equations, how should they be set up as far as what they look like? How should they be set up? There should be things like here, there should be something here. Exactly, the x, and we're always going to use x and y. X and Y on one side, number on the other, always. All right? So you might have to rearrange sometimes. Bring a, move a Y over, move an X over, something like that. All right? That's about as difficult as it gets. And I'm probably, there'll probably be one of those on the test on Friday, too. Okay? In a, in a word problem, you guys might see letters other than X and Y, <coughs> especially if you use like length and yeah. width. But mm -hmm. we'll always give you non word problems with X and Y. Yeah. All right? So yesterday, we did elimination. But someone tell me, what did we have to do that was different from what we did on Monday? Like Colin said, we had, to, we had to multiply, right? We multiplied yesterday. We had to multiply everything, even the number after the equal sign. All three terms had to be multiplied. All right, remember that, okay? Now today, we're gonna use elimination. So Monday, multiplication, and nothing. All right, it was all set up for us. Yesterday, multiplication in one equation. Take a wild guess. What do you think today? Multiplication. Good, Logan. Multiplication in both equations. All right, multiplication in both equations. There's going to be one more situation we want to go over, guys, where you're going to have to multiply in um, one equation only. It was something we didn't cover yesterday. All right, we want to get to it today. All right, so we're going to multiply in both equations. All right? So... Just like we did yesterday, we gave you those hints. Remember, like we said, we said if um, you had a single letter in both equations, multiply by a negative, and it would eliminate. We said yesterday if you had a single letter in one equation and a number with that a number with that variable in the other equation, multiply by the opposite, it would cancel. All right. Here's another little hint. I'll cut two hints. All right, to decide what to eliminate and what to multiply. Another, ex another situation where we would have to multiply in one equation, all right? So you look and you see that, all right, this is the easiest. Opposite sign, opposite letter, I mean, um, same letter, same number, different sign. That's the easiest. It's all set up for you. It involves no multiplication. That's the easiest. It's done. Okay, we don't have that. Okay, we got an X and X. They're both positive in both equations. I'm going to multiply by negative 1. Oh, I don't have that. I got a single variable in 1. I'm going to multiply it to make it the opposite of that the letter that's above. Nah, I don't have that either. Check this. This is your next, this is your next option. All right? If the larger x or y is divisible by the smaller x or y, 
multiply the equation with the smaller x or y by a number to get the opposite. I know it's le I know it's lengthy, wordy. When we show it to you guys, it's gonna make it's gonna make sense. I promise you. And Mr. Hague is doing right an example up there right now. I'll wait till you guys get that copy done, and we'll talk, we'll talk about that example that Mr. Hager is from the board. We won't solve the whole thing. Yeah, we're, we're not going to solve it. All we're going all we're, all we're to put down is what we're going to multiply by. That's it. Again, this is just a, one more example or one more option that you have. All right, when you, again, the easiest is when the opposite sign, um, same number, same letter. That's the easiest one we have. All right, these two are probably the, the two we do today are probably the most difficult in options that you have. Squeeze it in the best you can. Sorry, Rosie. All right. So when I look at that, if I look, when I look at this system, right? What am I, um, Brian? Can you give me my? What are my two x values? Three and negative six. Three and negative six. Okay. Um, Samantha, what are my y values? Huh? Two and five. All right. So three and six, are those, uh, is one of those divisible by the other? All right. Zach, do you agree? Three and six, is one, divisible, is one of those divisible by the other? Yes. All right. How about two and five? Can, the, can two go into five evenly? No. So our option, our option is going to be three can go into six, all right? Do we already have opposite signs? We already have opposite signs, right? Three is positive, six is negative. What equation do you think I'm gonna multiply? Who can tell me by raising their hand? What equation do you think I'm gonna multiply by? The top one or the bottom one? Caitlin? Huh? The top one, right? Brian, do you think you know what we're gonna multiply the top one by? Okay, if I multiply by one, the x's wouldn't can't. We, we, we know that the x's are divisible by one another. So that means we're going to eliminate the x's. Maria? If I multiply by three, it'll give me nine x. Two. Two, right? If I, multiply the, if I multiply three by two, right, three times two, what am I going to get, Victor? Six. Six. Positive or negative? Positive six. So I'm gonna have a positive. I'm gonna have a positive six up top. I'm gonna have a negative six on the bottom. Is that what I want? Will those? Will the x's eliminate? Yes. Yeah, because I got a positive and a negative, right? Right. So I'm gonna I mean, remember just like we did yesterday when we multiply. What do we have to do? Am I just gonna multiply everything, everything, even even the number that's after the equal sign by two? All right. So 6x plus 4y equals 2. Good. And then we don't have to put the bottom. We just want to show you how this works. We want to show you how this one works out. All right? So we're getting to more of the more difficult options that we have to eliminate. All right? So we have to multiply. Like I said, we've got to multiply the top by 2. All right? Because we, we know that 3 was divisible by 6. And three goes into six, three goes into six two times. All right. Um, what if this? What if that six was positive? What if the six was positive? What would I have to do now on the top to make those eliminate? Right. Subtract. You're on the right. I, I I think I know what you're saying. I think you're on the right track, Brian. Multiply by negative. Multiply by negative. All right. 
So this would have, I have to multiply by what? Negative two. All right, that would eliminate that. All right, so this is, the, again, similar to yesterday, we're only multiplying in one equation. All right, so we've gone through, like I said, we've gone through the, e, the easiest. Opposite sign, same letter, same letter, same number. We don't have that. We don't have a single, val single variable in both, so we can't multiply by a negative. We don't have a, a, fi like a, a single variable and only one, like we have 5x and x in one of them. We have to multiply by negative 5. We don't have that. Here's your next option, all right? Here's your next option. And that's part, that's, this is probably the second hardest way to eliminate, all right? Now, probably the hardest is when you have to multiply in both equations, all right? So we're going to focus on the smaller x and y. So you might say if you had like, you know, we'll do one in a second. If we had like 2x and 3x and maybe 4y and 7y, the x's are smaller. They're going to be easier to work with. You're going to multiply, you're going to multiply by a smaller number. Right, so you want to kind of you want to focus on the x and y, all right, and see which one which, which ones have a, which ones are like closer together in value, in smaller in value, all right. So so we're going to focus on that smaller x and y, all right, and we're going to we need to multiply, all right, both equations by a number to get the smaller x. Probably the hardest one. So it, it seems um, it seems a little confusing when you just read it, okay? But the goal is still to, to cause something to eliminate, either get the x's to be opposites or get the y's to be opposites. So you're going to have a choice. Which what what do you try to do? We focus on the smaller numbers because smaller numbers are easier, right? So we'll we'll do at least one example like that. But first, I think we're going to do we're going to do that case first, okay? I'm not actually going to do the problem that, that I just made up. Yeah. We'll do one that Mr. Roy and I already made. Okay, same template as yesterday. The only difference is when you look at the problem, you might have to use both of these boxes. Mm -hmm. Or you might only have to use one. Okay. We'll look at the problem and see if we can figure it out. We'll do an example one right now, guys. All right, so looking at example one, anybody think they can tell me if you're going to have to multiply both equations or just one equation for this problem? And then tell me why you know that, kind of relating to what we did in the notes. Just one. Just one, yep. How do you know you just have to multiply one equation? Because when you're divisible by two. Yeah, if you look at, look at the notes, Okay, it says if the larger number is divisible by the smaller, then we only have to multiply one equation. Okay. In this case, we have a larger number that's 6. We have a smaller number that's 3. Is 6 divisible by 3? What do you get if you divide 6 by 3? 2. 2 is a big hint at what number you might use here to multiply by. It's either going to be a 2 or what's the opposite of that? Negative 2, right? So if you take your larger number, divide by your smaller, you get 2. And now we have to decide if we should use 2 or negative 2. Um, so what letter are we going to eliminate? Yep. Eliminate x. And Caitlin just said we're going to multiply the bottom equation. We're going to multiply the bottom by 2 or negative 2. 
How come negative 2? Because it makes it opposite. If you multiplied the bottom equation by positive 2, this 3 would become a positive 6. The top is a positive 6. That wouldn't work. Okay? They have to be opposites. One positive, one negative. Okay? So what happens to this top equation? Anyone else tell me what's going to happen to the top equation? Count? Yeah, it stays the same. Okay, so just over. copy it over. Now the bottom equation, we're going to multiply everything. Okay, and when Mr. Roy and I say everything, there's always three things. Don't, don't forget one of them. All right, uh, Corey, what's 3x times negative 2? Negative 6. Negative 6. That's good. Uh, Logan? What's negative 2 times 7y? Negative 2 times 7y, negative 14. Anything else? Oh, negative 14y. Why? Good. And lastly, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. All right, so now we'll, we'll add these up. Uh, we already said x's are going to eliminate. Hey, Justin, what's negative 2y minus 14y? Negative 16. Good, negative 16y. Negative 8 plus negative 8. Negative Good, negative 16. Hey, it looks like we're going to get a nice answer here. What's my, um, what's my last step to get my answer? Uh, well, Victor. You divide. Yep, by. Negative 16. Good, negative 16. That's gone. And what's, Victor, what's negative 16 divided by negative 16? Positive 1. Good, positive 1. And then we plug it in. Right? Yep, now we plug it back in. Always go back to the original problem. Okay? Don't use the stuff that we multiplied because these numbers are bigger. 6, 14, and 8, that's bigger than 3, 7, and 4. Um, let's, uh, yeah, let's just do the bottom one. Okay, so if we, oops, filling that in for y, sorry. So we're going to have 3x, um, 7 times, we're going to fill in 1 for y. Chloe, what's 7 times 1? 7. Good, you got 7 equals 4. Okay. Uh, so guys, we need to know, like we've done all week, if you get to that part and you have two, if you have two variables there, two letters, you did something wrong. All right? You're putting in, everything's going to be exactly the same. The only thing that shouldn't be there is the variable you just solved for. All right? If you solve for y, don't put y there. Plug in the number for it. If you solve for x, don't write x there. Put the number you got when you solve for it. Okay, now my next step, i got to get that 7 over. Um, how about Ariane? How do we do that? We subtract 7. Yep, subtract 7. Okay, 4 take away 7. It's going to give me negative 3. Uh, and Sam, my last step. Divide by 3. And negative 3 divided by positive 3. Negative 1. Negative 1. All right. So again, this is probably the second hardest type because you have to figure out what to multiply by. Okay? okay any questions on that one? Before we do the, um, the har hardest type we're going to have. The hardest? The hardest. That's a little confusing. What if it like, makes up and we do it like, the other way, like we plug in? If you accidentally plugged in this number in the wrong spot? Yeah, instead of just yeah. like putting the equation. Well, if you plug it in for x, it's not going to work. Yeah. But if you plug it into the top equation, that would be OK. But you can't plug 1 in for x. You've got to plug it in for y. Yeah. But again, you pick the equation that seems easier. Okay? Always go back to the originals. 
Uh, let's look at this one. All right, so this one says 2x minus 3y equals 2. And 3x minus 4y equals negative 1. All right, so guys, when we do this, what's the first thing What's the first thing we should look for? What's the easiest way to eliminate? The easiest option to eliminate? Who can tell me? What's the easiest? Anybody? I'm dying up here. What's the easiest option to eliminate? What's the first thing you should look for? The easiest way to eliminate? A variable by itself. No? Okay. What, what three things are we looking for? Different sign, same number, same letter. So first thing you should look for, go through your checklist. Do we have that here? No, we don't have that here. What's the next, what's ne so we're going to have to multiply. We know that, all right? What's the next thing we should look for? Okay, not quite yet. Do we, uh, what I would do next is kind of like what we did yesterday. Look for, is there a single variable in both equations? Is there an x and x or a y and a y with no number attached? Do we have that? No. no, right? Remember, we have an x and an x or a y and a y with the same sign in both variables. We're going to multiply by a negative. We did that yesterday, right? That's the second. That's probably the second easiest option. Okay. The third, right? The third option is okay. Maybe we got. Do we have a variable by itself in one of the equations? We have a variable by itself in one of the equations. Mm -hmm. We don't, right? Because in that case, we could have multiplied the equation with the variable by itself to make it opposite of that variable or that letter in the other equation. We don't have that. All right? We don't have any variables, like Caitlin was saying, we don't have any variables that are divisible by one another. All right? Three is bigger than two. Three can't go into two evenly. All right? 4 is bigger than 3, 4 can't go into 3 even. All right, so now we know we have to multiply in both equations. We went through, you've gone through every option that we've covered this week, from the easiest to the hardest. All right, so for this one right here, we're doing the, hard, we're doing the hardest option that there is. We have to multiply both equations by a number. All right, so now you have uh, a choice, okay? if we want to try to eliminate the x's or the y's. I'd say they're both about the same amount of work here. Um, which variable do you want to try to eliminate? x or y? x. x? OK. So that means we need to figure out a way to make these x's opposites. Like 5, negative 5, 10, negative 10. We've got to make them opposites. So what are the two numbers in front of x? Two and three. Two and three. You can multiply All right. the bottom by negative two and the top by positive three. All right, let me write that down. We said bottom by negative two, top by three. So our goal is to make these numbers opposites. I think, I think Logan has, has done it. Okay, if I get stuck, what I do is I think, well, I can find a number that 2 and 3 both go into. What's the smallest number you can think of that? 6. six. So if you can find that number, 6 is what you want to make both of these, except you want one opposite. So you want one to be a negative 6 and one to be a positive 6. And I think the way Logan's going to do it, that's one way to do it. It's not the only way, but it is one way. Okay, so let's triple everything in the top. Um, how about Kevin? What's 3 times 2x? 6. X, good. X, All right. Um, Michaela, what's 3 times negative 3y? How much? Yep, negative 9y. And lastly, 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, so we multiplied the top. Now we still have to multiply the bottom. Right, what are we multiplying the bottom equation by? What number? Ryan? Um, 
negative 2. Okay. Anyone think they can tell me what that entire equation will be when you multiply everything by negative 2? Anyone think they can give me the whole thing? Logan, you think so? Negative 6 x negative 14 y equals negative Okay, can you say that again? So negative 6 x okay. minus. Tell me, how did you get that second part? What did you multiply? plus 8y, I like that better, and then negative 1 times negative 2 gives me 2. All right, now that we've figured out what to multiply by, the rest is the same as what we've done. Add them up. What letter here cancels out? X's are gone. Negative 9y plus 8y is negative, if you want to put it in, you can, negative 1y. 6 plus 2 gives me 8. Now, how do we get rid of that negative 1? Yep, divide by it. Right. So, Sabrina, what's, um, what's y? Negative 8. Okay, what do I do with negative 8? Yep, where do I want to plug it back in? We're going to plug it back in for y. And I have four different equations up on the board. Which one, which two should I definitely not use? The new ones. Yeah, don't use the new ones. Okay, Because the new ones have bigger numbers. Go back to one of the originals. Pick whichever one you think um, is easier. And guys, when Mr. When Mr. Hager writes out that equation, everything should be there in the original except what? Everything should be in that original except what? Everything should be there from the original equation except what? The y shouldn't be there, right? What's taking the place of y? Negative 8. If you have two equations, if you have two variables there, guys, you're wrong. All right? To get, that's what we're trying to work with. We, don't, we can't work with two, equa uh, two values. It doesn't work. All right, so I picked the top equation because I think the numbers are a little smaller. Well, most of them are. All right, so I have 2x minus 3 times, we're going to fill in negative 8 for y, equals 2. All right, next step, uh, we've got negative 3 times negative 8. about uh, Jalen, what's negative 3 times negative 8? Uh, it is positive. I like, I like that idea. But it's positive. What's 3 times 8? 24. All right, so next I'm going to bring my 24 over. To take away 24, if we need our calculator, we could use it. But I'll just help you out. Okay, to take away 24 is negative 22. And my last step is to divide each side by 2. 2, two and 2. So what's x? Negative 11. Okay, so any questions on that? Yeah, that, that, that that's as difficult as it gets. So you have to multiply both equations. Okay, on the test, you'll um, probably have about maybe one, it's one or two, no more than that. Okay? The, all the other problems are going to be the, the easier, yeah. easier ones. All right, so last problem we'll look at today is a, um, it's a word problem. Okay, it's a problem you guys are, I think, familiar with. You, you've worked with it before, having to do with rectangles. Does anybody remember um, what the formula is for the perimeter of a rectangle? Yeah, two. You have two L's, 
and two w's and you add them up. 2L plus 2W is your perimeter. Now, for this problem, I wouldn't use X and Y. I would use what, what was written in the formula. All right? Because then if you use X and Y, you have to remember, was X length or was X width? Okay, L length, W width. Easier to remember. And guys, that, that formula right there, 2L plus 2W equals perimeter, that's always, if it's a rectangle problem, that's always going to be one of your equations. Automatically. Logan? That's always going to be one of your equations right off the bat. If you know, if you know the perimeter of a rectangle, the rectangle problem on the, on the test on Friday, that's going to probably be your first. It might be your first equation, it might be a second equation, depending on how the problem's written. But that's going to be one of your equations right there. All right, so we'll, um, let's just start. We'll read it as we go, and then we'll use the information as we see it. The length of a rectangle is. How would I write that? The length is. Can you write L equals? Yep. So we got L equals, the length is six more than three times the width. Six plus three. Yeah, you can, you can write it that way here. Uh, just be careful when it's subtraction, the order that we do it in. But here, that's, that's fine. Okay, you've got three times the width. And then they want six more than that. Right? So 3w is three times the width, plus six. That makes it six more. Wait. You could have six plus 3w. That is OK here. Yeah. But if it said um, the length of a rectangle is six less than three times the width, you have to do it like this. You couldn't, couldn't flip it. OK, does everyone see that? So we usually try to put the number by itself at the end. Put the number with the W or with the letter right after the equal sign. All right, second, second equation. The perimeter is 44. Now, guys, what, at the beginning, we started going over this problem, right? And we showed you that formula. Anybody remember what I said? What did I say about that formula? Huh? How we want to use it? No, always going to use it. Always going to use it, right? So, Zach, is that going to, what's, what do you think equation two is going to be? Same thing. So it's going to be L equals 3W plus 6? Huh? Yeah. No, what's it going to be? You're going to use the formula, right? Yeah. What's the formula? Do you know what P is now? Good. So tell Mr. Hagel, tell Mr. Hagel is going to write. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Perfect. There it is. You have, that, that, that's when the formula comes into play. Put the, put the formula in there, and all you're going to put in, all the way that's going to be different is, you know the perimeter in, you know the perimeter now, write the number. All right, now when I get to the second box, in this box, okay, I want things already lined up. So I'm just going to write that here. When I get to this box, I don't want to have things in different columns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some work below to line things up. Um, which equation here already is in the, in the format that we like? The bottom one, letter, letter, number. Okay, bottom equation is okay. What about the top equation? What do I have to do there? I'm gonna rearrange it. And what you know what? What I might even want to do is, if you wrote it in the box, that's fine. But maybe I should have put it below and then copied it in after I rearranged it. Um, Sabrina, what were you going to say? Subtract three. Subtract what? Subtract 3W. Yeah. Just take the 3W, move it, to the other move it to the other side. That puts the 6 by itself. And you have L minus 3W. That's equation 1. That's equation 2. 
So I think this is probably a better way to do it. Rearrange it right below, and then put it in the boxes already nice and lined up. So 2L plus 2W equals 44. L minus 3W equals 6. Do you think this is a time where we're going to have to multiply both equations? Caitlin? No, this is not the hardest case. It's not quite the, the easiest case, but we definitely don't have to multiply both equations. Anyone tell me what I have to multiply by here? In one equation, top or bottom? Top or bottom? Top or bottom? If you're not, Okay, so what letter are you trying to eliminate? L. L. I like that idea. We're going to get rid of L. So we need to make these opposites. So if the bottom one is a positive 2, we're going to make the top one negative 2. So multiply everything in the top equation by negative 2. And again, things are already lined up. That's, that's the way we want it. Bottom equation, what are we doing with it? Keeping it. Keeping it. 2L. Plus 2w equals 44. Okay. Uh, Victor, what's negative 2 times L? Um, negative 2L. Yep. How about negative 2 times negative 3w? Um, positive 6w. 6w. And then negative 2 times 6 is negative 12. Okay, so you guys already told me we're going to eliminate L. I'll cross it out. Um, Brian, what's 6W plus 2W? 6W plus 2W. 8W. Good, 8W. Okay, and then if I need my calculator, I'm going to use it. Yeah, it's going to, everyone's, it's 32. Okay. And my last step to find out the width is to what? By eight. All right. So now we know the width of the rectangle is four. What is this? Meters. All right. So we've got the width is four meters. Now, how do I get the length? Plug it back in. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is put it in the top one. Okay, that's the easiest. L minus, what are we filling in for W? Yep, fill in 4 equals 6. Okay, again, as Mr. Rice said, at this step, you should only have one letter. If you have two letters in the third box, something went wrong. Okay, so L minus 12 equals 6. So what is my length of the rectangle? That's it. Yep, it's going to be 18 meters. Okay, so you're not going to have a lot of word problems on the test, as we said. Two, two word problems, and then eight regular problems. All right, so you guys have seen everything for the week that's on the test. Um, tomorrow, we won't be doing anything new. Okay, just a review day. Okay, on the homework. First three problems are what we did today. Four and five are going to be review from Monday. And number six is a review from yesterday.